Hey guys, welcome to Raw Review presented by WrestlingRumors.net. Alright, so the set is still under construction, guys. It's a little Listen, bit different this week. The good folks at WrestlingRumors.net sent us some brand new lighting. Now, we obviously didn't want to debut the lighting tonight, guys. You guys know, as we mentioned last week, we're in the middle of a move right now. Um, that wasn't not going to stop us from no. filming a Raw Review. Obviously, we missed, fan, you know, we missed fan feedback last week. We apologize for that. But there um, is no way we were missing Raw Review. Exactly. And as you can see by my Rollins-esque beard that I have going on right now, uh, we, you Rollins know, we're, we've, it, we've been kind of pressed for time. So, um, <laughs> first, the first lady of WrestlingRumors.net, Samantha Daly. Um, yeah, I am Adam Daly. And guys, what, the reason why we did it this way is we really wanted to go with a really rugged, old school, kind of ECW mm -hmm. backroom feel. So it's kind of like... Hey, if we're going to do it one last time, if we're going to do it a uh, uh, ham radio, we're going to make it feel extreme style, <laughs> um, channeling my my Paul Heyman. So, Sam, uh, Monday Night Raw, Labor Day weekend, um, didn't really expect much out of the show tonight, mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. No, um, never. Not on Labor Day. It's 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 a holiday show, guys, so we're going to get a lot of fantasy, or yeah, fantasy booking. We're going to get a lot of house show booking, which mm -hmm. obviously we saw. Um, I didn't have, I predicted two things were going to happen. Um, one was they were going to make a match next week with the Divas Championship. And, of course, they did. And the other one, I thought they would, obviously, which they had to, uh, advance the storyline of the statue more, and they did. So, and other than that, they really didn't have to do much more, and they really didn't. I mean, little bits and pieces. What did you think was probably, like, some of the highlights of the night? I thought the highlight of the night was... Okay, I'm, I'm just going to say it. Some people are probably not going to agree with me or probably just go off completely on this. But I loved the Summer Rae Rusev angle that they promoted like they did it. tonight. I love it. I do. I love it. Just the hidden little innuendos they kept putting in, like uh, the the, gliss the glistening of his in his tear, the uh, sparkle in his eye or in, something. Uh, the, his eye. In his one eye. One eye. Get it? His eye. Get it? Oh, oh yeah. We, we got it. Yeah, I think a lot of us got it. What I like about it is, and I know a lot of people really aren't into this, the crowd to me, see, the crowd was dead all night. So this mm -hmm. is not, I don't think subjective to uh the storyline i mean because the crowd was just dead mm -hmm. but i will say this um i'm highly entertained by this entire angle it's hilarious and i don't How care what not anybody find says any of this funny? it's hysterical it's mm -hmm. absolutely hysterical it is it is kind of sad that summer Rae, not summer Rae, i'm sorry lana broke her wrist it's unfortunate the, yeah yes. speedy recovery to lana um you know whatever the the situation is going on I hope they said she'll well. be out up to four months I mean, that's the initial reports i don't know so who knows at least there's not going to be any physical altercations mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure she's going to get brought in i did think it was interesting though and, and i think it's just something to think about when you're in this vicious love trot you know or love square that's going on um rusev kind of saying you know that he was never really mad at lana or lana mm -hmm. he would never have done that to you that sort of thing How's Summer Rae ultimately going to take that? Well, seeing as how Rusev called her his sweet little oh, submissive Jesus. Summer, oh, I believe geez. she'll take it and smile all about it. All right. Um, she'll say, that's why Rusev is so sweet. I can't believe Lana mistreated him. My sweet submissive yeah. Summer. Um, it was, it <laughs> that was, was so great. weird. There I was love so, Rusev. There was so much love... awkwardness in it's that so promo great. between the two of them. It's it was, so great. It was amazing. It's it was so hilarious. Great. All right, so now we have uh, – let's and guys, we are going to make this a little bit abbreviated. It's Labor Day weekend. We're not going to insult you guys. You either watched mm -hmm. or didn't watch it, so you know it, was, it really wasn't that great. We're going to hit a couple points, boom, boom, make it a little bit funny here. Um, Sting Rollins, let's face it, it was really about the statue. Mm -hmm. Sting destroying the statue at the end of the night. Rollins having With the – dump truck, by the way. Um, Rollins having to wrestle in uh, two matches tonight. Triple H put him in two matches, setting him up for Night of Champions, just saying, hey, I'm preparing you you know, for these mm -hmm. two matches. Um, I think it's going to be funny. Uh, it's going to be interesting when we have uh, Fields of Gold uh, versus Disconnect mm -hmm. at Night of Champions. And that's a joke that I know that you didn't get, um, Rollins Band and Sting uh, fans out there. Um, anyway... No one. If, if if you guys, it, I, I know if you guys don't get Rollins, Henry Rollins, I'm sorry. You guys are missing great music. So if you don't get it, screw you. Anyway, um, what did you think about the whole Sting thing? Because you, to your defense, you missed the opening segment with Seth Rollins promo. Seth freaking Rollins, as mm -hmm. he'd like to be called from now on. You missed that, but you got to see the basically the rest of it. What did you think about Sting and Rollins, and you know the Sheamus tease, and even if you want to throw in Cena and everything too? So. I will say that it was necessary to get people into the Sting Rollins feud right now. Because really, they just threw it together and people were pissed. People didn't like the idea of Sting. Sting's an old man. He's not into it. I just wasn't really into it because it just, to me, came out of nowhere. 
But I think this was needed to just cement it even more. I love I loved it. You know, Sting was acting like you said earlier, very Joker esque. Well, right, especially in whenever TNA, he was he did, destroying yeah, the statue. Right, because in TNA he did. I mean, he did a little you know Joker character where where he was going with the Joker character, and uh, and you could tell that he was like kind of channeling some mm-hmm. different variances of Sting. I was I love the fact that they're not having Sting just come out and be stoic with a baseball bat. Yeah, I I love that they're having Sting come out. And actually engage it in legitimate promos. It made me more promos. interested in Sting than I have before. Absolutely. And and mm-hmm. I'll say this, though. I don't know if it... Re- we needed to see the statue get destroyed. Yeah. I don't know if this match necessarily needed it. Because I think mm-hmm. this match already has so many question marks of... Are, would they really give it to Sting? Will Sheamus cash in? Will Rollins overcome the odds? Well, I have Will- a feeling that with all the obstacles they've been putting in front of him... And how he's been kind of losing them... Because I mean, he lost all right. his matches tonight. Yeah, yeah. He was he was on the back burner all night. Right. So that probably means he's going to come out victorious, night of champions. And and guys, if you so, and if you did miss it, just guys, him chase it. Oh, oh, and I, there's something. There might be some surprises mm-hmm. in start. The night of champions. I keep flip flopping in in my head what I think might happen at night of champions. Now, but. if you go back and notice, whenever Seth Rollins came out for the triple threat match, the mm-hmm. six man tag team. Someone actually followed Seth Rollins out of the crowd and yeah. into, and down yeah. the ramp through the ring. If you actually look, he's coming down the ramp and you can see someone start walking behind him and he looks back and they cut the camera. And they never go back to that angle to show that other person. But at one point, whenever he's going around the ring to get in, you see security go over and trying to like push this dude over to get him out of the way of the cameras. So, again, another week, two weeks in a row where fans are just acting crazy. Well, and it's not even two weeks in a row. And listen, I, and I know we didn't get to do fan feedback, but I did see a comment. Yes, and I, I absolutely listen. I, I'm Bobby Heenan got me into professional wrestling, so trust me, I know what used to happen. You know, in the territorial days, I know people getting shot at, people getting stabbed, people wrestlers. Mm-hmm. Listen, it's happened. Wrestlers attacking other wrestlers with forks in 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 international hotels. Listen, I'm not saying it has. That's that's why I said. You know, it's always gone on, Mm -hmm. not with this frequency and not with this big of a stage with this many eyes on it. This has always happened in wrestling, and that's what I I mentioned last week. But I'm talking about the frequency and and the the manner of not only people's social media accounts being attacked. And I'm not saying things of like the Zara situation or Mm -hmm. or Hogan or, or nothing like that, but I'm saying when... People are hacking other people's social media to try and intentionally get them in trouble or for whatever mm-hmm. agenda they they try to pathetically push. Um, as my account will get hacked tomorrow or whatever, which you're not going to find anything. I'm a nobody. <laughs> um, but between that and between all the physical altercations, the, it's just been happening so rapid fire. And again, I, yeah, it's it's always happened. But this has been within the past like within the past about four weeks, we've had Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose. And Seth Rollins. Everyone from the Shield. Atta- basically, why attacked are, by why a fan. are people trying to take out the Shield? Is it is it really that people hate the Shield that it's bad, Vince's or is the boys. Shield was so was so evil or something? I think his I think his the Shield that are is like weird. Triple now H's that you guys. bring it up, I never realized it was all three of them. The shield. I, I'm just saying that guy was lucky that Seth Rollins, whenever he t- whenever he looked over his shoulder to be like, oh, who the fuck is that? That that dude's lucky Seth Rollins didn't drop the belts and just knock him the fuck right, out after the whole thing with. With Dean right. Ambrose, with the dude right. having a knife, and and my thing is, guys, and again, this is just the frequency that this is happening mm-hmm. at the exponential rate that oh, it's now we're talking this on a weekly basis. This mm-hmm. is this is absurd. This used to happen it's, like it's once every couple of years. No, it it did happen. Listen, this has happened. It hasn't happened like this in a long time though. Mm-hmm. But when it was territorial, yeah, absolutely. The, you know, you could look read any book. I, you know, the uh, whoever left a comment. I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't catch a name, but they you know they mentioned Heenan's book. Listen, I'm a Bobby Heenan guy. Um, I know what Bobby Heenan went through, and there's so many other guys that are like that. You know, not only, especially the great talkers. Yeah, but usually but when, someone jumping in the ring like that only happens once in a blue moon. These past on WWE of years. television, yeah, correct? On, on I mean, WWE. everything has been so greatly controlled. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the last real. I mean, you obviously have these run-ins. The last one I remember that created a big stir. I mean, because I'm a fan, mm-hmm. is when uh, Jericho kind of got attacked in a parking lot, and, it, and Jericho didn't know, and he just kind of swung backwards and accidentally hit. You know, uh, I, I think he accidentally hit a woman. And really, and it wasn't Jericho's fault, yeah. and there was heat on Jericho for it, but, you know, so, the, yeah, obviously we're not saying that this is, like, a was new thing. Was that the thing. time when he punched Shawn Michaels' wife? No, that no. was in storyline, <laughs> and that was, I'm not even going there, man, that's messed up. Um, but no, it's, it, it's just that, that we're seeing it at such a frequent rate, guys, 
relax. That's why we can't have nice things. Like, we need to tone it down as fans a little bit. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, reel it in. Just like the NFL. I can't even watch the NFL or really have fun with the NFL Mm -hmm. anymore because it's not even, like, fun banter. It's, like, just ignorant, vile banter. Mm -hmm. And when you start really starting to threaten lives of entertainers, I mean, there's sports entertainers, guys. They're there to entertain us, and we want to attack, like... Mm -hmm. Doesn't make sense. Um, but the champ- what we did have with Seth Rollins, though, was a champion versus champion match, him versus Ryback. Sting causing a little Titantron interference, uh, Ryback getting a small package win. And then in six mag ta- uh, tag team match, primetime players and John Cena versus New Day and Seth Rollins. John Cena with the John win. John Cena with the win. Um, what did you think, though, about anything else? Any, any finishing touches you want to put on Seth Rollins and Sting for tonight? No, I just thought that, for me personally, it gave it a little bit more to get into the feud for, yep. personally. Because it gave us a little bit more personality out of Sting than we've seen since he's debuted in WWE. I can dig it. I can dig it. And, and no, I, I completely agree with that. I, we're finally... there's a, he there's really a, hasn't spoken much or done much. Exactly. He was very charismatic exactly. tonight. And like you said, again... Very Joker-esque. Well, and I think it's important because everybody... Rem- and, and it's unfortunate that a lot of people... And, and a lot of casual fans don't realize that there was a sting before Crow Sting. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of young fans don't realize that there was a sting yeah. before... Thank this you. Girl. So uh, there's a lot of people and just hey, because... Hey, I, I grew up with Crow Sting. Right. I didn't know until years ago, until you told me, that there was another sting. You know, she's too young for you and that, that's <laughs> those memes. Um, I grew up with Spiky Haired Sting. And listen, just because I wasn't a Sting fan, the dude was always magic on the mic. Yeah. Um, sorry, that was a weird play on words. I didn't mean to tie it into a, to a Kevin Nash. Yeah, <laughs> no disrespect to Kevin Nash and that either because he was literally in Magic Mike. Uh, so, uh, you know, there we go with an NWO versus Sting thing all over again. <laughs> like how we tie that in. No, but Sting is a hell of a charismatic guy. And I, I, I'm glad that... There's not only a generation that forgot that sting, mm-hmm. but a new generation that never got to see that sting. Yeah. Um, because he is. He's he's fa- he's fantastically gifted on the microphone. Mm-hmm. So um, so to your point, I completely agree whatsoever. Um, Want to talk about the tag team division real quick? Sure. Why not? Um, so <laughs> one of the Matadors hit El Torito. Then the other Matador decided to hit El Torito. So I guess the Matadors turned heel tonight. I guess. Or they just don't like bulls. Tiny, tiny bulls. Maybe. Okay. Maybe Moving they have something on. against brown bulls. Moving on. I think one of the funniest segments we've had tonight, Sam, I'm going to let you really embell- embellish on it, was New Day backstage with Seth Rollins, then Edge and Christian come in, <laughs> and then the Dudley boys come in. Uh, Sam, any thoughts? It was a trombone versus... The kazoo. K- kazoo Wars. The kazoo. It was awesome. You can never go wrong with Edge and Christian. I, and and you, especially putting them in a little promo with New Day was, was just gold. Oh, it was perfect. Mm-hmm. And the Dudleys played into it perfectly. Mm-hmm. And Edge and Christian, as soon as as soon as the trumpet was out and they showed Edge and Christian, I'll admit, I started mm-hmm. screaming, Bring it to the kazoos, I want kazoos, knowing that they had to have had it. Mm-hmm. Little moments like that. I think it, we didn't really get a great show tonight, but this is one that was a really cool. It had little great spots, too. I love seeing Edge. I just mm-hmm. met every time I, I see Edge. Everyone loves seeing Edge everywhere. I miss Edge. Edge. I miss Edge. Edge had to go too soon, so we love seeing yeah. Edge when he comes back. Yeah. Um, let me see. And really, with that, I mean that's that's all we really got on that. Um, tag team championship, I believe, is on the line next week, though. Yes, they're going against the primetime players next week, and the winner of that match gets to face the Dudleys for the championships at Night of Champions. Yep. And it makes sense, guys. It's going to be the first week of Monday Night Football here in America. As you know, obviously the rest of the world that means nothing to you. <laughs> in America, it's we have two back to back NFL games. Um. I don't know. It depends who you ask if you actually get into it or not. But it is a big deal in this country. <laughs> so put, expect the WWE to put expect WWE rather to put a lot of eggs in their basket next week. And we did see that with what we're going to get to next, the Diva Revolution. Something again that I mentioned, and I don't want to say that I was right. You were right. She was going to get coaxed. And you know what? I, I said Sasha on the show, and then as soon as we wrapped well, it, Was she coaxed, or did Charlotte come out and say that the authority made the match? She went to the authority, and the authority made the match. Um, so next but you week, were right about the authority making the match. Yes. So. Next week, we do have. and But I wish my I wish it was a little... I wish, it, I wish Stephanie would have made the announcement. Yes. I agree with you. That would have been a lot more dramatic. Yes. It would have been a lot bigger of a moment. Yes. But it, with it being Labor Day, I can see why they didn't point. go that it's, way. It's another point. And now let me ask this. So obviously now your big thing was as long as as long as she defends it, if she breaks AJ's record, 
If she's defending it, I'm not going to be mad if she breaks AJ's way. I'm not going to be as Thank mad. You. I'm not going to say I'm not going to be mad, because I'm probably going to still be mad. I'm okay. not going to be as mad. Okay? So let's ask a question I'm going to be honest. Let's ask a question. Keep it 100. Does Nikki Bella win? Does Nikki Bella retain the championship n- next week? Or is Charlotte your new Divas champion? You know, I'm so torn right now. Because if Nikki loses the title, or if she keeps the title, she beats AJ's record. If she loses the title, she ties AJ's record. Which is even bigger of a fucking slap in the face. Okay, so... I, that's what I I'm want torn. to happen. I don't know if I'm I want sorry. Nikki Bella to retain or not. Because I don't... Listen, this isn't it's like a Nikki Bella thing. She either ties AJ or she breaks AJ's record. And, here, and I don't here's want the thing. either of them to happen. Here's the thing. And I put this on Twitter. Nikki Bella has done more for AJ Lee's AJ Lee's streak than AJ Lee ever did. Because, and again, I'll ask you this question. I'll, I'll ask everybody at home. What do you guys think? Who did AJ Lee, whose record did AJ Lee break to, to, to break the longest Divas champion of all time? Um, whose record was it? Tick, tock, tick, tock. Nobody knows. Me? No, I was asking people. I was giving people at home the chance to. I was gonna talk. say you asked now, me this the other day, I asked and you I gave off like five names, Thank and you. none of them. If are you right. didn't know, it was Maurice, and I think it was only like two hundred twelve days or two hundred twenty days, something like mm-hmm. that. So yeah, when, the hooker had the longest title reign for the longest time. Miz, I didn't say it. That was her. That was her gimmick. Well, she was well, Ted DiBiase's well. prostitute that he would bring to the ring. He was the million dollar man that bought Maurice, and she would bring him to the ring. And then when he lost that championship. He also lost his hooker. I mean, it was just AshleyMadison.com. Um. Anyway, so I'm just I'm just kidding. She's not really a hooker. I, I I'm not gonna I love lie. Maurice. I love the French girls. I'm not gonna. But but my point is that, is that to to your point about like you know you you rattled off five names mm-hmm. and you and you didn't even know who AJ Lee broke you know yeah. broke the record. I was shocked whenever the you told title, me it was Maurice. Listen, the title never meant anything really still until Nikki Bella threatened AJ's record. Nikki Bella, guys, I know I you don't want to hear it. it. I know you don't want to hear it, but Nikki Bella has done more for AJ Lee's record than AJ Lee ever did. And I'll give you other reasons why. When AJ Lee was was on her reign and she was still racking up days, what were all of you chanting when she was in the ring? It wasn't AJ Lee. It was CM Punk. <laughs> But now you're true. begging. But it's everyone now is begging, don't break AJ's record. You weren't chanting for AJ Lee when she was there. You were chanting for CM Punk during her matches. Well, can you... Okay. No, I'm just, no. I was just going to say, can you really blame the crowd when AJ was pretty much yeah. doing everything Punk mm-hmm. did, but in a female form? No, but it's... Can you really well, blame him? No, but you know what she you She was did, being very Punk. Right, but, but then she gets guilt by association because obviously who she's married to. Not that that's any guilt by any, by any stretch of imagination. I so, love the fact okay, that you're so, so, the doppelganger wait a thing works perfect. So, so people aren't allowed to chant CM Punk when AJ's in the ring, but people are allowed and it's encouraged to chant for Daniel Bryan whenever Bree's in the ring because it's the only way she'll get crowd pops. No, I don't. I'm not agreeing with that. St- I don't agree with either statement. Okay. I, I don't think I, because I think the biggest complaint was everybody. AJ Lee is everybody's darling. But when she was in there, you weren't cheering for her. She was only everybody's darling. She became, she was everybody's darling, but then really became everybody's darling. I hate to say it because she was married to CM Punk. Because people found out about their relationship. I love AJ Lee. And AJ Lee did do a hell of a lot for the women's division. Please do not gloss over what she's done. AJ Lee, I believe AJ Lee did more for the Divas division than Nikki Bella. But... Nikki Bella has done way more for AJ Lee's title reign <laughs> than AJ Lee ever, ever could have imagined. Yes. Um, and I'll be honest. I have to agree with you on that. I don't like to, but I, I have to. I, I want them to stay tied because I want to see the internet just explode. I, I do. I'm I that guy right some, now that I'll I... I'll break something. I'm an agent of chaos. And I want to see everybody when they're tied because it's the, it's gonna, it'll be the, the argument that nobody will ever be able to win. It'll be talked about forever as the argument that nobody can win. And think about it this way. You do give two role models that hold that record then. Because you have one style that is the, that is the I don't want to say the more athletic, but you have the more preppy kind of jock kind of whatever, you know, female. And then you have the nerd. Are you calling Nikki Bella like That's how they market her. Well, like a jock. That's how they market her. No, they market her as a... Fucking she has varsity numbers bimbo. on her. She has varsity numbers on her. Where's the anyway? But then AJ is yeah, like yeah, with her tits hanging all out and her ass. Okay, her shorts are smaller than some of my underwear. Okay, 
There's so much hate. So just there's, to finish my point. There's smaller than my underwriter. She's on national television. Just to finish my point. So you have Nikki Bella. Who, I'm talking about how they're marketing. But anyway, so you have like the jock and then you have the nerd. They tie, you know, they tie the record. So you constantly have that forever battle. Me on the nerd side, I'm always going to be an AJ Lee fan. But I'm also not going to lie, guys. Let's call a spade a spade. Nikki Bella has done more for AJ Lee's career at this point, maybe, than AJ Lee did. And that's no disrespect to AJ Lee by any stretch of the imagination. We just would not be talking about AJ Lee if it wasn't for Nikki Bella. Again, can't argue that. And really, the only reason why we're... Well, that's for a different time, different place. So, <laughs> Sam, uh, what else do we want to hit? Um, we're still looking for a third person for Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns mm -hmm. uh, to take on the Wyatt family uh, and, uh, you know, Braun Strowman, uh, the big new black sheep, so to speak, of the family. But it really kind of seemed like they zoomed in. Well, they didn't zoom in, but they had the camera set back backstage and it was Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, and Randy Orton. Correct. So and I'm thinking that's that was they there was no sound. It was just like the commentators were doing their thing and it was well, they just showed the cameras back there. So I think that might be planting little small seeds that it might be Randy Orton and if it is, that way people don't think it came out nowhere. Well, I think I think that yeah, I think I mean I think Not that was to take Randy Orton's gimmick from him, but you know. I I'm sorry, I'm gonna laugh at this one. I mean I think that was definitely the seeds planted, but I, I mean I think that was like a little teaser. But I don't think they planted any seeds. I think they were blatantly honest about it whenever the Wyatt family cornered Randy Orton after the Sheamus match. I did uh, not see that match. But I told you I about it. I happened to be out of the house at the I, time. Correct. Uh, and that's how bad, guys. And, and please, <laughs> WWE, no disrespect to either of these gentlemen. But when she, it's Sheamus versus Randy Orton and she goes, I'm going to run up to the store real quick. I'll be right back because I've seen this a thousand times and I'm going to see it a thousand times again. And then she runs right back. It's, 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 and, and knowing that she didn't miss anything other than something I told her about and she just happened to forget that guys, please no more, no more <laughs> shame. And it's, listen, we, I, Seamus tonight actually got over on me a little bit. Mm -hmm. I actually, I was really into Seamus tonight. Him and Rollins going back and forth. Um, I love Randy Orton. It's just, please no more. It's like watching the same episode over and over <laughs> and knitting and knitting and knitting. All right. Um, but, uh, Sam, anything else you really wanted to hit up? We're going to do, a like I said, a little abbreviated show today because it was Labor Day. Not, we're exhausted. Um, I look like I've been lumberjacking for about six <laughs> years. Um, Sam, I mean, is there anything else you really wanted to toss in that, like, really sticks out that you're, either you're looking forward to or that, you know, that maybe, maybe for next week or Night of Champions or anything? I'm actually really looking forward to watching the Stone Cold podcast with Triple H, not Triple H. Edge and Christian. Yes, yes, yes. I can't wait. I can't wait to see Edge. Um, mm -hmm. I can't wait to see Christian. Not to overshadow Christian, but I'm a huge Edge, Edge mark. Fan. Yeah, I'm a huge Edge mark. So, um, and I'm sure the stories that they're going to tell are going to be fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah, I can't wait for that. And um, I don't know. I don't know. Night of Champions. I'm, I'm, I'm looking. I, I don't know. I think there's some things I'm looking forward to. Um, Night of Champions wise, hopefully. Um, we'll have to see. We'll have to see, but, um, I don't know, Sam, do you have any famous last words before we, uh, before we go? No, I just hope everyone enjoyed the review and raw like we did, and you had a great Labor Day, and we'll have some more videos up for you soon. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much, and thank you for sticking with us. I hope you guys enjoyed our fake uh, our fake set for tonight, and actually saw the satirical humor in why we're doing this. Um, we're gonna we actually, and like I said, the good folks at WrestlingRumors.net actually got us better lighting. We are setting up a much better you know a much better set for you guys. We just one last time we wanted to almost kind of take it one step back, do an old school Raw or an ECW style feel for you. Um, and and so WrestlingRumors.net, thank you so much, uh, and make sure shout out Chris Walter. Uh, Derek uh, Stoughton, I believe, and uh, Drew Goldfinger. Them guys do great work on WrestlingRooms.net. Follow all of them on Twitter. Make sure you like us on Facebook. Make sure you follow us on Twitter. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Make sure that you follow Sam at LadyNexus13 on Twitter. I am at AdamDaily13 on Twitter. And Sam, before I figure out a quick quote, um, send us off for the day. Hope everyone has a great night. Thank you, Winston-Salem! Of course he was. <laughs> See you guys. Happy Labor Day.